Hi there, today our topics are models of evolution and learning, parallelizing genetic algorithm, and learning set of rules. First, let's discuss models of evolution and learning. In this, we have two main evolutions that are 1. Lamarckian evolution 2. Baldwin effect Lamarckian evolution Lamarckian was a scientist, who had proposed that, evolution over generations, is directly influenced by the experiences of separate organisms, during their lifetime. He has mentioned that the experiences of an organism will directly affect the genetic makeup of its offspring. If an individual learns during the lifetime, to avoid toxic food, then it can pass on this trait or characteristic genetically to its offspring, which does not need to learn that characteristic. This is a form of attractive conjecture, or guess since it presumably allows for effective evolutionary progress, compared to generate and test process, which avoids the experience that, an individual gained while its lifetime. In spite of such attractiveness, the present scientific evidence denies the Lamarckian model. The new view at present is that, the genetic makeup of an individual is not affected by the lifetime experience of someone's biological parents. In spite of such biological fact, the recent computer studies depicted that the Lamarckian process can improvise the effectiveness of computerized genetic algorithms. Now let's discuss Baldwin effect. Since Lamarckian evolution is not an accepted model of evolution, other mechanisms have been suggested by which, individual learning can alter the course of evolution. One such mechanism is called the Baldwin effect. It is named after J.M. Baldwin who first suggested the idea. The Baldwin effect is based on some observations. If a species is evolving in changing environment, there will be revolutionary pressure that increases the capability to learn during their lifetime. The Baldwin effect provides a mechanism that helps the individual for learning, and to increase the evolutionary progress during the evolution. There are several attempts to develop computational models to study the Baldwin effect. The next topic is parallelizing genetic algorithm. These algorithms are suitable for parallel implementation, and various approaches of parallelization. The total population is divided into various groups of individuals called DEMs. Every DEM is assigned to different computational node, and standard genetic algorithm search, is performed at different node. The communication and cross-fertilization between DEMs, will occur very less frequently. The transfer between DEMs occur by migration process, where individuals from a DEM, are copied or transferred to other DEM. The advantage of these type of methods is that, it minimizes the crowding problem encountered in non-parallel genetic algorithms. The fine-grained implementations are opposite to coarse-grained implementations. They assign a process to every individual in population. The recombination is performed over neighboring individuals, where various type of neighborhoods are proposed, ranging from planar grid to torus. The next topic is learning set of rules. One way to learn set of rules is to, first learn a decision tree, then translate the tree into an equivalent set of rules such as, one rule for each leaf node in the tree. The second method is to use a genetic algorithm, that encodes each rule set as a bit string, and uses genetic search operators to explore this hypothesis space. Various algorithms that directly learn rule sets, and differs from these algorithms in two key aspects. They are designed to learn sets of first order rules that, contain variables. This is significant because, First-order rules are much more expressive than propositional rule. Algorithms discussed here use sequential covering, that learn one rule at a time to incrementally grow the final set of rules. Let's see an example of first-order rule set. Consider two rules, that jointly describe the target concept, ancestor. Here we consider, case 1, predicate parent xy to indicate that y is the mother or father of x. Then the predicate ancestor xy to indicate that y is the ancestor of x, related by an arbitrary number of the family generations. Case 2, predicate parent xz, and ancestor zy. If c is the parents of x, and y is the ancestor of z, then we can easily say that y is the ancestor of x. One way to see the representational power of first order rule is, to consider the general purpose programming language prolog. Well, that's the end of today's topic. Along with the video explanations, we offer notes, mind maps, infographs and more to all the subjects from your syllabus, and also career guidance programs from current working IT professionals, and many more to our supporters. To join our supporters community, use the subscription link given below. For more topics from your syllabus, please visit our website given in the description.
If you like the explanation, press the like button and rate us from 1 to 5 in the comments section below. For getting updates on any video we posted, please subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. We will be back with another concept soon.